Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to talk about exponential functions and logarithm functions with space two, right? So we're basically going down the list of basic functions and uh, we get to the exponential functions and its inverse. So far, right, let's recap what we have done. We have covered this concept, recap. Okay, we have covered these concepts. Definition of function. We talk about a function is a rule that assigned to each element x in the set of a, right? We know this is, so we call it input x in domain. Exactly one element. We know that this word, the, these two words are absolutely important or we can use unique. Right, and we the and the input, then we have the output. And this output is called f of x, right? And that is in range. In range. In the range. Okay. So this is the definition of function. We have you know tweaked a little bit, make it a little shorter. But in general, a function is a rule that applying the rule to all possible inputs produces the, the uh, you know, all possible output, which makes the range. Now, we talk about vertical line test, and we studied all of these functions. And then we introduced the definition of one-to-one -one function and horizontal line test, right? And what, what is the case not a one-to-one -one function? We talk about that definition as well, right? Is that um, f of x, you know, the output are, you know, for some different inputs, the outputs are the same. And then we went about to talk about the inverse function, right? What are the special situations about inverse function? Among these discussions that we talk about that if a function is a one-to-one -one function, it has exactly one inverse, right? That's f of inverse. So let me make the fonts just a little bit larger so you can see the, so we can see, we can see the inverse function right here, okay? There are three properties here, okay? So I'm gonna add another one, okay? The graph of F and its inverse are symmetrical with respect to that line of symmetry, Y equals to X. Algebraically, okay? The composition of a one-to-one -one function and its inverse, if we compose it in this order, taking input from the domain of F inverse and then compose and afterwards and we apply F, we get X. And in the other case, in the other order, okay, we're taking input from the domain of F and this composition will also equals to X. And thirdly, thirdly, the domain of F in this case is the range of F inverse. And vice versa. Vice versa means the domain of F inverse. is the range of F, okay? We didn't quite mention this and, and talk about this very, uh, very much in the past because the, the, the inverse function situation we discussed, they, they both have the same domain and same universe, same domain, the same range. Therefore, it doesn't make much difference, right? And next, we talk about increasing function and decreasing function. Increasing function 
and a decreasing function. Okay, and these kinds of functions, and we have definition, right? We talk about the definition. So, um, and latest but not the least, even function and odd functions. Okay, so what we're going to do today is that we're going to talk about exponential function and the logarithm function with base two. And these functions obviously is not very strange to us. And I believe some of you actually do know them. Okay, we're just gonna recap. But we see it from function perspective. And here is the rule, okay? The rule is, this is the rule in consideration. This is the rule. So we first talk about this function exponential function, exponential function. What this rule does is that when we have an input, when we have an input, and this input is, you know, we will apply the rule to this input, and we produce the output by taking the input to power base two, to power base two. Now the question is, what will be the domain? What will be the domain? I.e., what are all the possible values that x could assume? Could x be negative number? Could x be zero? Could x be positive real number? So let's check out a few values. Could x be negative? Say if x equals to negative three, Right, if x equals negative three. If x equals negative three, the input is negative three. And so the power is gonna be negative three. What is two to the power of a negative three? Okay, according to a definition of, x, uh, of exponent, okay, any base raised to the power of minus n equals to one over b raised to the power of n. In our case, b is two, n is three. So two to the power negative n is equal to one over two to the power of n, which is three two to the power of three in the denominator, that's gonna be eight. So one over two times two times two. So that's gonna be one eighth. So the denominator can be a negative number. Could it be fraction decimals? Could it be fraction decimals? Okay, for example, if input is equals to one half, right? With this input, we apply the rule of the function to that input. So half is gonna be the input. So two under one. So half is the power. And what would that be? The power is two under one. What is two under one? It is square root of two, right? The base two goes here. The, 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 the denominator in the power goes to the root. The, the one goes to the power inside the root. And of course, by default, that's just going to be square root of two. Okay, so the power can be negative number, can be fraction, can be negative fraction, fraction, right? And it can also be zero. So if the input is zero, with that input, we apply the rule to the function, uh, to the input, 
So we get two to the power zero. What is two to the power zero equal to? Two to the power zero equals to one. And of course, X can be any positive number. X can be any positive number. So from this observation, we notice that X can be negative number, positive number, zero. Therefore, domain would be all real numbers. All real numbers that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. What is the range then? What is the range then, right? So as the consequence of all possible choices in the domain, when we apply the rule to every possible number in the domain, what can we expect? What can we expect? So we're gonna leave this question here, but we do notice, we do notice when the input is negative three, the output is one eighth. One eighth is a number which is larger than zero. It's a positive number. When input is half, the output is a positive number. The input is zero, the output is also a positive number. So we wonder if this is always true. Is it always true that the output is always positive, right? So we leave that as a question mark because next we're gonna to go towards making a table, okay? We're gonna make a table, okay? We're going, we're gonna make a graph, we're gonna make a graph. Okay, so let's make a number of rows, okay? The same drill, input, output, right? We use that consistent method. And for parentheses, input, output, okay? We know that input can be negative number. Say I can have negative three, we did negative three, and we did negative two, and we did uh, negative one. Could I, could I choose fraction? Of course I can. And I chose zero, and I'm gonna choose a bunch of other number. Okay, I'm gonna choose a bunch of other number. Um, so I'm gonna insert some rows, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose the input one, two, three. I'm gonna choose a, I'm, gonna, I'm leaving space here, so I'm gonna come back here, right? And uh, for the, first we start with the easy number to work with, right? And we're, we're gonna apply the rule, right? What's our rule? This is our rule. This is how we produce the output, right? Produces the output. To produce that output, okay? To produce that output. And if you like, I would like you to maybe pause the recording and start to work on your notebook, okay? Use this notation, the input is negative three, and then negative three is going to power two. And that's equals to one eighth, right? That's one over two to the power of three, and that's equals to one eighth. For input equals to negative two, uh, negative two, and the power is negative two. And for that power, I think make, I need to make the fonts a little bit larger, okay? And that's gonna be one over two squared, okay? Two squared is four, so this is a quarter. So by far, we get two points already. One is negative three, comma, one eighth. And the other one is, negative two comma one quarter, okay? You input a negative one, two to the power of negative one, and that's gonna be one half. A third point, okay, you input a negative one, output is half. So far, we always get a positive output, right? When the inputs are negative, the outputs are positive. When input is zero, 
We did that earlier, right? So two to the power zero equals to one. The input is one and that part is easy, right? So this is just gonna be two. So we got two other points, input is zero, output one, input one, output two. And the input is two, two to the power of two, and that's a four. You can put a three, two to the power of three, and that's an eight. So we got two more points. So two comma four and three comma eight. Three comma eight, okay? So now we can plot these points in a rectangular system, in a rectangular system. system let's do it, okay? So let's do it. We start the, the rectangular system there. And I don't need these anymore. And uh, I will make some adjustment. Okay. Um, so we're gonna put the points in place. Okay, negative three, one eighth, and we make it uh, maybe a, just a black dot, right? A black dot, right there, right? You can see it, it's above x axis because the height is one eighth, right? The horizontal is negative three, the input, the, the output is negative eight. It's above x axis, but it, it, should not, it doesn't touch the x axis, okay? The next point, it's a little bit higher. It's a little bit higher. Next one, a little bit higher. Even higher, right? You can see getting higher and higher. And zero comma one, when input is zero, output is one. And uh, we're gonna see that. Okay, so the points you can see gets higher and higher. And we have three more points, right? One comma two, two comma four, input, output. Three comma eight. So we got these points, we got these points. And uh, right here, we got these points. Now the question is, on this side, we can see is it getting higher and higher, right? It's getting higher and higher. How about on the other side, in the other direction? Is it ever going to touch X axis, right? Is it ever going to touch X axis? And when, right? So for that reason, we're going to choose a number. Okay, I'm gonna choose a negative 10. Okay, so F of negative 10 is equal to one over two to the power of 10. Okay, two to the power of 10 is equal to 1024, I believe. 1024, okay. How do I know that? I think I just know it. Could you just check it? Go ahead and check it. 1,024. Okay, 1,024. 1,024 is in the denominator. And one divided by 1,024 is going to be a small number. So let's see what the numerical value. Ah, it doesn't show here. So I'm going to 
use this software. Okay, I'm just going to use this convenient. Okay, what is this number? Okay, you see, this is a pretty small number. How do I know? Because it's 10 to the power negative four. If we write it as a decimal number, right, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 97656. And there might be more digits afterwards. There might be more digits afterwards, right? So that's the number. You can see it's getting smaller and smaller as, okay, so I'm gonna, uh, it's getting smaller and smaller if we choose um, negative, negative exponent. So I'm gonna put this number over here. I'm gonna put this number over here. In other words, when, when the input is going towards that direction, right? I, need, I meant to use a different color. So when input goes to that direction, right? Right here, what is, what is shown here is negative three. If I, if I keep going, I will reach negative 10. By the time it reaches negative 10, the dot is even closer to X axis, but it doesn't touch the X axis because this is still positive. This, is, this number is still positive. Okay, so this number is still positive. So you can imagine if, if we take the value of negative 100, and this is gonna be negative 100, this is gonna be negative 100, right? So this number is gonna be even smaller, right? It's gonna be smaller than that, but it is still not zero, it is still positive. So for that reason, we understand this number is still positive. It is a further off to the left. So from this observation, if, if the input is negative 10,000, only, we're only getting zero, getting to X axis closer, but never ever touched it, never ever touched it. So now, we have some idea about the about this side of the picture. Okay, as x approaching negative infinity. Okay, as x approaching negative infinity. Okay, as x approaching negative infinity. Two to the power of x is going to approach zero, but bigger than zero, higher than zero, okay? So the curve will indefinitely getting closer and closer to x axis as x approaching negative infinity, but never ever touched it, never ever touched it. So now let's connect the dots. Here we go. When we connect the dots, when we connect the dots, of course, it could go higher and higher, right? In this direction, it can go as high as possible. In the other direction, it will go as close to zero as possible, but never will touch zero, but always above zero, always above zero. For that reason, we realized our previous observation Okay, for any input, negative, positive, zero, the output is always a positive. Okay, the output is always positive. Say for this point, it's negative 100, and the output is one over, right? So that vertical measurement is still above zero, okay? So for that reason, the entire curve is above x x is always above x axis. It's above x axis. So now, what do we say about the range? Okay. There's a couple ways to say about the range. If we use interval notation, we will say zero to infinity. 
okay? Not including zero. So we put a parentheses here. But the other preferred, the other preferred way of saying the range, I will use two to the power X is larger than zero. Okay, this is my favorite, very useful algebraically. Okay, so learn to use this one as much as you can. If we put domain and range in one sentence, what would that be? Well, that would be two to the power X, whoops, two to the power X is a positive larger than zero for any real number x, okay? And of course we can use, we can even use other shorthand notation, okay? We can even use other shorthand notation such as two to the power x, right? Larger than zero for any real number x, right? We can use a little shorthand notation and right here. Okay, I'm gonna introduce that shorthand notation to you. Where is it? Come on. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. Uh oh. It's hiding from me. Not here. Maybe it's here, there. So this little symbol represent for all real numbers, for any real numbers, okay? So that domain range in one sentence and shorthanded, shorthanded notation, okay? So by now we got the domain and range and we got a graph, we got a graph, okay? So, we got the domain and range, and we got the graph. Okay. So we don't need that anymore. Now, is this function one to one? Right? Is this function one to one? It looks like it is. It is one to one. Okay. Because whenever the input are different, whenever the input is different, the output will be different too, okay? So it is one-to-one. -one. So it has an inverse. It has an inverse. Before we get to the inverse, is this function increasing? Whenever input one is less than input two, and their output is two to the power x one, is less than two to the power x two. Hold on, sorry. Okay, whenever x1 is less than x2, two to the power of x1 x sub one. Uh, hold on. Two to the power x sub one is less than two to the power of x sub two. And x1, x2 is from the entire domain. It's increasing on the entire domain. It's increasing on the entire domain. Okay? So it's an increasing function. It's an increasing function. All right? And of course, if it's an increasing function, it's not an odd function. Is it even? Is it even? You can think of it, is it an even function? Is this an even function? Of course not, there's no symmetry. There's no symmetry about the, the y-axis, right? Is it odd function? Well, for odd function, you have to have something on the third quadrant and we don't have it. So it's, it's not, if we have something here, it should have something in the third quadrant, right? And we don't have that. 
So this is not a, it's not an odd function either, right? Um, so for even odd consideration, right? Is it even function? Is it odd function? You, we can just go straight by definition, right? We can go straight by definition. Um, to, to complete it, say even or odd, right? Even odd. Since I mentioned that, I just, uh, uh, let's just talk about this, right? This is an increasing function. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that part to, to clean it up. Okay. Is the function y equals uh, f of x equals to two to the power x even function? Right? You will have to, according to the even function, you will look at f of a negative x. Right? F of negative x is two to the power of negative x. If it were even, then these two should be equal, right? And they cannot be, they cannot be equal most of the time. So it's not even, not even. It, could it be odd, right? Not even, not even why? Because f of x, is not equals to f of negative x for some x, for some x. The, the one ever become for some, right? For some, let's take an example, say for some, right? We just need for some, for, for which one, right? f of one is not equal to f of negative one. Right, f of one, that's two. F of negative one, that's half, right? Not even. Is it odd? Is it odd? What is the definition of, of odd function? For odd function, what do we have? We have f of negative x should equals to negative of f of x. Okay, for any, for any, for any input, for any input, right, for any input, for any input, right? Well, we have f of x, we have f of negative x, right? The question is, if I put a negative sign in front of negative, uh, in front of f of x, what do I get, right? This is f of negative x, right? And the other one is f of x here. If I put a negative sign in front of it, if I put a negative sign in front of it, do you think, do you think these two might be equal? Of course not. This is always a positive and this is always a negative, right? Why? Because two to the power X is always a positive. We just talk about the domain. We just talk about the range, right? This two to the power X is always a positive. Therefore, negative two to the power X is always negative. So this is a negative. And this is always a positive. How do I know it is, it's always a positive? Because two to the power negative X is equals to one over two to the power x. This is always a positive. So a positive number and a negative number can never be equal, right? So um, it is not odd. It is not odd, okay? So this function is not odd. So we have covered all the concept regarding this function. So next, let's look at the inverse function. Okay, we just mentioned that this function is one-to-one. -one. This guy is one-to-one. -one. Okay, he is a one-to-one -one function. So it has exactly one inverse, 
it has exactly one inverse. Okay, so let's call it F inverse, F inverse. Okay, we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. Okay, do we know how to find it? Do we know how to find the inverse? Do we know how to find the inverse? We do, right? We, we know the procedure to find inverse. So we know in this, we even know, we even can guess the graph. Okay, we can even guess the graph, okay? So we know the picture, we know the, the, the graph of the function, right here. Right? So the inverse, uh, the inverse function will be, will be what? Will be something symmetrical along which line? Along this green line. Oh gosh, come on. Where are you? Oh, come on. What's going on here? Wait. Oh, my bad. My bad. The wrong input. Doesn't recognize. Okay. So along this line, if we flip over, if we flip over, okay, imagine this curve flip over, that's going to be the inverse. The question is, what will be the description of that function? In other words, what will be that rule of that function? Okay. So let's set out to see if we can find that inverse. The general step we start with y equals to two to the power x, right? And we know the domain. What is the domain? Domain is all real numbers. And the range, the range is what? The range is all positive numbers, right? or two to the power x is larger than zero. We have covered that, right? Two to the power x is larger than zero. So now the first step in finding the inverse function is we do the swap. Swap x and y. Swap x and y. And the consequence, the consequence, okay? The consequence is we're getting x equals to two to the power of y. And step two, we're gonna solve for y. Solve for y. Do we know how to solve this? Do we know how to solve this? Well, this is the moment we introduce logarithm. This is the moment we introduce logarithm. Y is equals to log base two of X. And as the result of this, this swapping, as the result of the swapping, domain and range swapped for the new function, okay? Domain and range swapped. Right? The former domain now is the range. The former range now is the domain. So this domain, which is for X, right? The domain now is, a positive, is domain and range swapped. And range now is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is the other perspective. So as a result, we have found the inverse of the exponential function with base two. And that function is log base two 
of x. Okay, so that's the inverse function. That's the inverse function. Now, shall we graft it? Shall we graft it? Of course, right? So let's graph. Even though we already know the domain and range, we can use it directly. You can see this domain doesn't include negative number. It does not include zero, right? Now, what is the relationship between the two? What is the relationship between the two, right? If you guys learn about logarithm from past experience, we know that log base two, log base two of baloney, I say, right? Whatever you call it, there's a relationship right here. Okay, the omega, which is the baloney, you can call it, is two to the power of triangle. That's exactly how exponential function is defined. Of course, in the general definition, it's even more general. It's even more general. It allows the base, it allows the base to be any qualified base. And of course, what is a qualified base? The base has to be positive and it cannot be equals to one. Okay, it cannot be equal to one for both cases. Okay, for both cases. So for, so we, now we, we start with the special case. We start with our special case. Um, I think I'm gonna make another recording about to continue on this. That's, um, I'm gonna have office hour in 10 minutes. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next recording.